Good day and welcome to another video tutorial. This video tutorial will be on installing and configuring DTP Server on CentOS 6, ideally 6.3. That's the operating system I'm working with. Um, I've taken the liberty of doing the configurations already and it's actually working. Um, but I'll go back through the steps with you so you would follow, okay? I actually did a combination of um, stuff. I primarily use this website and I could include it in the, the description for anyone who would need it. It's basically a straightforward installation. Um, so the first thing I did was to run this command, the update command. And let me see, I'm supposed to have it in the terminal somewhere here I hope do I have it? I hope where did I run it? What's now? so much things I was doing hmm. do I have it? I'm not seeing it nevertheless I'll run it over hmm, not difficult to do yum update And the purpose of that is written right here. You need to update the um, repositories and the packages. Okay. Um, after that is done, you need to install the ATP because I don't know what configuration you selected when you installed CentOS. So the next command I'll run to show you. Well, your output will be different. I have no packages marked for update because I just did the update. So let's do the um, install DHCP. Now it will tell me nothing to do because I already have it installed already. Package is right here um, DHCP 4.1. I can also could have run the RPM, I think dash Q DHCP. And I will see the package is already installed, right? So according to the tutorial, the next step is to open this file and make some dual editing to the file nevertheless before i did this i actually entered a static ip address um system preferences network connections and that's in the card i'm using well that's the interface i'm using i should say selected click on edit ipv4 settings and let's select add this is my IP address 2.2. My gateway is 2.1, which is my router. And I'm using a mask which would give me about 15, well, actually 14 usable IP addresses. This is my DNS over my router again. Click apply, apply when you're done. I'd also advise you to run the service network restart command. So you refresh the interface. Um, you can also click here, disconnect, wait for it to resolve, click it again, and then click back system at zero. Anything you want to do would be fine with me once you get it done. Now, after you put any static IP address, you need to run and edit this file. However, this file I think is a read only file. So, what I did, I ran this. Where's the command? Well, should, let me clear the screen so you can see what I'm typing better. Okay, so I ran the chmod command. Is it here? Right, I ran this command. Let's go. Right, this command. chmod r um, 0777. That command basically gives you unlimited access to any file. So I just ran that command on the file and I could have configured it afterwards. So what I'm going to do. I run it again. Well, no, I won't run the give me unlimited access again. I just open the file. Alright, you get it. I like that editor. Um, right, so when you do that, after you put any static IP address, the only thing you'd actually have to change here is to change the on boot from no to yes. 
I think everything else should be configured properly for you but nevertheless um, confirm it's configured properly you don't want to have any problems okay cool so after you edit that file you have to edit this file I did the same thing just in case it was a read only file I ran the same chmod dash r0777 and the file to give me unlimited access when you open the file you will just see this line here let me open it as well um, right generate DCP and you only have to enter the interface the at zero interface which we saw when we came here well you could actually see it here as well at zero and then the at zero here that's the interface you're using the CP args right and click save after you do that configuration you gotta open this dhcpd conf file and now i did a combination of things i didn't purely just edit it like this what i ended up doing was when i ran the command let's see if i can get it back right this is the file here when i ran it the first time i only saw these three lines here so what i ended up doing was I went to this file location and I um, copied it basically pasted it here and did also editing I could open it back for you I did a little editing to it and I kind of added the the number sign which is like a delimiter so like I kind of explain properly what anyone reading the file afterwards have a good idea what each line means the DCP pool, if you're familiar with Windows and doing DCP in Windows, you know what the DCP pool is, the DNS server. I would later be a DNS server one one of the um videos. I think I will be doing DNS server, I'm not sure, I think so. And then the domain name, that's me again. If you're not sure what the domain name is, you can simply run the host name command. I'll write afterwards and show you. Um your option router is a gateway. You see these things if you're not well actually does have default gateway and so on it's basically straightforward just basically follow what you see here or follow well, let me go to it and show you so you have no problems um computer file system supposed to be user um user what user share doc dcp user share share where is it doc the dcp dcp 4.11 i think the clamp but this is not a client machine right and um dcp conf sample yeah dcp conf that was well, not ipv6 so i didn't select this obviously when it came in here and i looked at the configuration this is the one I used there's one above I was a little more simpler but I wanted some more details right so this is the one I edited I copied this basically edited it according to the configurations of my system so you come back here and that's what it is basically it's not difficult at all all right um, let me see what else close this and close this too all right the next step was to start the service I did the DCP service dcp d start service dcp d start uh, where is the command it's right here and after i run it it would start the service which is pretty straightforward and this last command here it makes it it makes dcp service automatically start basically it starts it automatically while booting so i should have highlighted all this start dcp service while booting this simple command here check config dash dash levels two three five dcpd on and that was it to prove it's actually working what i'm going to do just one last time ip config or you saw it already so you see my ip address my broadcast address and my network mass right now to prove to you it's not coming from my router i'm going to click on the host machine host machine my windows when my laptop and show you the IP scheme this is pulling it's totally different all right so this is a hundred address and earlier in tutorial I showed you all that the pool is from 1 to 14 right 
um, the gateway is 2.1, this is my router, well, 196, then I'm putting a, a TST TIP address, however, I have a, a Windows XP VM running in the background as well, and his IP address is different from the host machine status. I'm gonna click on support and details. Well, I'm seeing it here already, but it changed. Yes, no. Oh, no, 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 right, cool. So the DTP server is 2.2, which is the CentOS machine. I'm at 2.1 is the gate because I'm going through the internet through the TSTT router, but the DTP server is 2.2. Right, make sure you understand that carefully. Um, DNS, well, then that's another thing to worry about that. So, DHCP is, yeah, is definitely coming from the CentOS machine. One more time, I'll go back to CentOS machine 2.2, and that's what I wanted to get. Okay, so that's basically it for this tutorial. Um, I won't advise you to have two DHCP servers on the same network, but I just wanted to do it. This way for you all to understand the configuration is very simple and I will also include the the web address in the description. Hope you enjoyed the video and continue watching. Take care. Bye.